Hi there, I just wanted to give you a few tips uh, about the viva and just keeping, taking care of your instrument, tuning it, what not like, uh, things like that. Uh, first of all, tuning, there's a particular way to tune it, uh, just your form. Uh, most of the time I practice at home in Seiza, like this, I use a little seat, makes it easier. But uh, I don't know, maybe you use a chair, it, it varies uh, depending on whether you're sitting in a chair or sitting in Seiza, but I'll show you how to tune it in Seiza since uh, yeah, it's a good way to get used to playing it. Uh, first of all, a little tuner, you have something like this maybe, I'm not sure, easy way to tune it, I'm not sure what you use, but I think these are very convenient. You can uh, clips on to the bridge here, and it just automatically tells you the note. Um, but there's all kinds of ways to tune it. It just this is convenient on stage uh, because you can tune it very quietly without uh, disturbing any other performers or whatnot. Anyway, so first turn from the low strings, and uh, usually a little pull on the string will get it back in tune. They tend to contract with temperature. The silk string is very sensitive. Uh, but if you want to tune it, first you lay it on its side, completely, uh, and push these pegs completely to the ground. They should be pretty firm. And then pull the string, and for instance this one is uh, just a little sharp. So usually a, just a little tug on the string will get it back into tune. Uh, this one's quite, quite sharp, so even if I pulled it, it might not tune correctly. So the way to tune the peg here, grip it face palm outward like that and then turn it either way while you're turning it push down on the instrument to keep the peg in place they tend to if you have it loose it'll slip out of place and tend to pull let the string like pull out like you're playing it almost and this this is a C a little a little sharp so again push down turn and uh, as you're pulling the string like that, you can pull it pretty hard. And it should be in tune. As for uh, the your your view is a little different because you have a four string, um, so the peg orientation is a little different. But same basic idea. So for the left side here, you have it the body against your straight up. Put your hand outward and hold it like this with your thumb, either hooked around the other side or usually in the middle part as you kind of pull it in, you can see. That way you can pull the peg inward as you're twisting it. So this one, you know, I usually, I have it pretty in tune already, so don't have to do it, but if you wanted to, turn it as you're, as you pull in with your thumb there, and get it in tune. Then, it goes in order of the string, so usually front one, then back. But it depends on how you string your instrument. And then as far as your playing posture, yeah, I'm a bad example. My teacher's always yelling at me for my posture, but basically the idea is to keep your shoulders back and straight. You don't want to be leaning forward, as I tend to do, and uh, you don't want your shoulders to be any kind of... You want to be straight across, back, and as you hold the bachi, I shouldn't see a picture, but uh, your, your playing style, you'll be holding the bachi like this with your small finger kind of curled around here, two fingers around the bottom, the base here, or this little neck area, and then your fingers on like an L shape almost. And it should be pretty firm, but you don't have to be holding it that much. And this area should be open a little bit. Uh, you should be able to hold like a little egg in there or something. But for, for my playing style, the modern biwa, I hook the small finger around into this notch. Gives it a good grip. You could probably use either one, but uh, traditionally, that's the way you hold it. But I play it modern. And yes, yeah, so keep your shoulders back. Uh, rest. You can rest your forearm onto here, but to make sure not to... Your elbow should always be behind the instrument here. And uh, the instrument itself should be fully parallel to your body not turned in any way, really straight, uh, almost flush against your stomach, pretty snug, it should feel pretty firm, you really even have to hold it, it kind of stays balanced here, a little bit angled obviously, and uh, <coughs> yeah, your left hand, 
of your right hand, holding the plectrum, uh, with your wrist bent almost completely 90 degrees, so it can be flatly placed against the body of the instrument. And when you pull up to strike, it should be a outward, upward motion, like you're looking in a mirror almost. It should be completely up. And then coming straight down to attack. And stopping either on the next frame and hitting the body. Much like the shamisen. And uh, also striking the body itself in this area. Which is a nice snap sound. But I have that habit again of you don't want to strum, you want to be up. You don't have to worry about even hitting all the strings. The key is to get a nice, powerful attack from above and strike. And you notice my shoulder's coming forward. It's bad. You need to keep it back. And hit like hit this. You shouldn't be able to even really see your strings. You should be back and uh, just getting used to it. So I practice just hitting individual strings and striking it. And when you hit the body, you should hit it, yeah, this area maybe. And it's not really used much in the modern playing style, but uh, sometimes you hit the body here with the traditional a little tap, and then you play. So it's like another little technique. Uh, as far as your left hand, you should look. Uh, my teacher makes the analogy of making a salute, kind of. Your arm should come up naturally, like this. Not, not out. Not. If you have a, if your arm's so close, it's a very weak looking kind of small stance. You don't want to have it way out here. It should be just a natural angle coming up. And as you slide your hand up and down the neck here, it should just kind of naturally go. You don't have to be sticking your arm any weird way. Just like that. Your thumb should be mostly wrapped around the neck of the instrument here. And when you play the frets, uh, your finger for, for instance, an, a single note, crap, rolled around here, your finger shouldn't be back here. It should be out front, ready to move to various strings. Uh, <coughs> and your thumb should be basically aligned with the fret or below it of the one you want to play, not up here. Keep it low, if you look from this side. And when you depress the second string, you just go down, put these two. And you slide up like this as well. Um, yeah, so when you add the second finger like this, push very lightly, you don't have to give a lot of pressure unless you are bending the note, which I'll get into later. But yeah, so try and keep your fingers relatively straight or curved up. You don't want to be curved down, pushing like this. It should be flat against the string. And uh, most of the pressure actually should be on your f middle finger here. This, this finger basically just kind of rests next to it. It's not very uh, important really, but it's just there for a little extra pressure when you want to bend the note. <coughs> uh, and as far as bending the note, various ways, but the power should come with not your fingers, but your wrist and your hand. Use your hand muscle to bend it. So, mm, a little out of tune, but uh, basically, yeah, use your hand muscle to bend it. In the case of just bending this note. The idea is the same. Just kind of hook your finger around and like this. And be careful not to pull your hand back with it. Keep your fingers out straight. And in the case of uh, bending this note here, uh, keep your small finger out. You don't want to have it back here. I mean, it's a small thing, but uh, good form to keep it out. Yeah. So